ought to worry about inflation. And now, look, a bump, a bump, a bump, a bump, a bump, a bump, a bump. Interest rates going up. And they get up there. And now, all of a sudden, hmm, and now the economy starts to crash, right? Look at 2006 and then 2007, right? Right now. And, and, and what's happening? The subprime market's going crazy. They, they're defaulting on their loans. The construction industry is going into collapse and all that. Now they hit the panic button and what? Bah, 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 bah. Interest rates come down. You see where they are at 2%? I got this chart a, a couple of weeks ago from the Fed, whenever I got it. They're down another 50 basis points from that. They're down at 1.5%. I want to tell you, if you look at that thing with interest rates, that is a sign of our monetary authorities, the people who make monetary pol uh, policy, who have not a clue. They haven't the slightest idea what's caused the problem in the economy, and they haven't the slightest idea what to do about it. Look at the instability in the interest rate. How in God's name can anybody plan? How can businessmen plan about an expansion of plant and equipment? How can people plan about buying homes and all that if interest rates look like a yo-yo? Okay? They can't. The government has created so much uncertainty that it's unbelievable. It's, un un it's incredible, right? So, that gets us to where we are now. Where are we now? Well, the federal government has now come around to admitting that... Um, I'll put this up there. They've come around to admitting that we're in a recession. Kind of. They don't like to say the word. Every now and then, somebody that works for the federal government slips and says recession. If you, you know, if you put a gun to their head while they're on TV, it's say, okay, recession or not, they say, I, I guess we just started one. The truth of the matter is we got into a recession in the fourth quarter of 2007. We have now been in a recession for a year. And it's getting worse. It's not getting better. It's getting worse, and it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better. Okay? We could be heading into a depression. The magic D word, that's enough to cause you not to sleep at night if you're an economist. I have to tell you, I have not slept well for quite some time now. I, wake, I woke up this morning at 2 o'clock in the morning, tossed and turned till 3.30 and got out of bed. What was I thought? thinking about the economy? what these nutcases are doing to it. So, now we look at this, and you can see, as the depression starts, look at the ratio of debt, you know, this is uh, total credit market debt to GDP. Holy mother, it goes up there and peaks. But wait, look at it now. Everybody in America has followed the government. The government has borrowed way more money than it could ever possibly pay off. What might be the best thing of all would be what? If the government would just repudiate the debt. It wouldn't be the first government in history to repudiate the debt. If they repudiated the debt, the federal debt, it might be very therapeutic. A lot of people would lose money, but a lot of those would be rich people, and who gives a damn about rich people? And, um, but uh, on top of that, it might put us in a position where nobody would ever love the, uh, loan the bums money again, right? And that, that would be a good thing. But at any rate, you can see what's, what, what's going on there. The, the, the debt to, uh, uh, to GDP ratio is going up. I mean, it's incredible. But think about that. We produce about $12 trillion worth of goods a year. Right now, maybe a little bit more, although that's going to decline with the recession. But debt between what the government borrows in a year and what businesses and households borrow, and we're not talking about financial companies borrowing back and forth here, is three and a half times that. Okay? It's incredible. We're in debt up to our ears in hot. Now, a couple other things you all might be interested in. Here is um, the, um, and, and I, I, I want to get in just a couple of seconds to what they've been doing, uh, but here are, here are the red is the official government estimate of in the annual inflation rate. And above that is uh, what John Williams says in his shadow government statistics, 
what, what he does is he says, look, the government periodically changes the way it calculates inflation. So, it's, and it's strange. Every time they change the way they calculate something, the new numbers make the government look better. It's, 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 it's amazing, isn't it? It's not a random error. It's not sometimes when they change it, the government looks better, sometimes worse. Every single time, the government looks better, see? So he says, well, let's go back, and he goes back to about 1979, I think it is, or something, and he says, what I'll do is take the government numbers, but I'll make adjustments for it, because they adjusted it, I'll, I'll, in effect, try and take out those adjustments, and we'll see what inflation would be recorded as if they used the same methods now that they had been using in the past. And lo and behold, when the government says inflation now is about 5%, John Williams says, no, guess what, gang? It's more like 13%, okay? Now, using that same thing, John Williams then estimates money growth. Remember, I showed you the M3, which they discontinued? Well, now you can see why they discontinued it, right? Because John Williams says, now, notice, this isn't M3. This is the growth rate in M3. So even though it comes down here, what it says is up here, it was growing almost 18% a year. Now it's growing at 14% a year. Money supply growing at 14% a year. Can you imagine what that means to, for the value of the dollar in the future? Okay, but much higher than what the government says. And then finally we get to this, and what this is, an unemployment rates, the red one is the one that the government puts out, which they admit it's about 6% now, but the government actually calculates about nine, I think it's nine different rates of unemployment. This is an unemployment rate. They calculate about nine different rates. But they only put one out in public. You've got to know where to go fish for it, you know, to get the others. So John Williams says, well, here's when the government gives its worst estimate, that's that sort of gray line. But then John Williams says, but wait a minute. Let's do it the right way. And then he comes in with those numbers, much higher. Now notice what the government does. One thing they do when they calculate unemployment if you become unemployed, they count you as unemployed, and so, uh, you know, so you have unemployed over the workforce, right? You're in the workforce, you're, you're unemployed. But if you stay unemployed for a while, and I forget the exact amount of time, and then you get so discouraged you quit looking for a job, well, all of a sudden they say, oh, you're not in the, un in the workforce anymore, so they subtract you from the denominator. But they also take you out from the numerator. You're not unemployed, and you're not in the workforce. And of course, what that does is reduce the unemployment rate. Um, wasn't it um, Mark Twain who said lies, the three types of lies, lies, damned lies, and statistics? And I tell you the truth. Add in accounting data, because of course you know what the saying on Wall Street is. Profits are an opinion. Cash is a fact. And, and then, of course, the worst of all is aggregate economic data. Oh, my God. You know, I mean, not, uh, enough to make you sick, okay? So that gets us down to here. And here are the growth rates. And you can see the government overestimating the growth rate. And then this is Bernanke's statement. And then this is where I wanted to go to, well, no, I wanted to go to the last one here first. Don't ask me why it's in the wrong order. You know. Do they have a clue as to what they're doing? 